on Sunday, actually come back Saturday evening for Mass, and then Sunday evening we'll be gathering here for Senior Vespers. We have a number of seniors who are going to be speaking, and um, wonderful music, and so we're excited for that, so come back for Senior Vespers. Garrett, this seems like it's just a little ringy to me, if you can turn me down just a touch, please. Um, just uh, want to in, in, uh, ask you, no, I want to do a welcome. We have a lot of folks here. Dan's whole family's here. I'm going to have Dan introduce them uh, when it's his turn. And so it's, it's great to have his mom and his dad and his grandparents and I think uh, aunt and uh, others who are here. But we also have an alum, uh, two alums who are here who have brought visitors to us from Malawi this morning. And so I'd like to invite uh, Dan to come forward if you would, Dan, or if you want to stand. Now come forward, then we can get it on the, the videotape that we're doing. You may remember that, uh, you may not know this at all because it was before most of you were here. In 2008, um, I had an opportunity to travel to Malawi with several of our students and uh, was a wonderful time to uh, enjoy the warm heart of Africa and to be there and visit churches and visit ministry sites and um, have a real life-changing experience. And one of the ways that I got connected to do that was through Dan, uh, who's an alum, and his wife Beth, uh, who uh, was, is an alum as well. Their daughter was here at the time, and um, they helped us put together this magnificent experience. So uh, this is uh, Reverend Dan Mary from Southminster Presbyterian Church down in Pittsburgh, and so we welcome you back to campus. Good to be back. So. Good to be back. Um, <clears throat> how many know where Malawi is? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Wow, this is a lot more than normally, you know. Uh, Malawi is a small country. If you think of the continent of Africa, go all the way down to the bottom. There's South Africa. Come up the east coast along M Mozambique and go inland a little bit. It is, uh, depending on, on what what book you look at among the 10 poorest nations of the world. We are delighted to have with us Charles and Deliwe Chikuo, and I'm going to have them stand, and, and, and I'm going to teach you how to greet them in Chichewa, which is their native language, okay? Are you ready? All right, you have to look at my lips. Muli Bwanji. Say that with me. Muli Bwanji. That, okay. Dr. Hopkins actually is here. He lived five years in Malawi. Speaks fluent Chichewa, or at least more fluent than I do. And then they will greet. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure for me to introduce to you Charles and Deliwe Chikuo, if you will stand up. And we're going to greet them by saying, Muli Bwanji. Turn around, let them see you. Charles is, uh, is the person who helped uh, uh, Southminster Church can construct what is, uh, according to uh, our mission partners in Mal Malawi, the best secondary school in all of Malawi was, was built by, was con helped constructed by this man. And his beautiful wife, Deliwe, is a maternity uh, nurse at the Malanji District Hospital. So, Muli Banji, and you say? <laughs> and we say, Didi Buin, okay. So, thank you. It's good to be back home at Mother Fair. Let's welcome One of the neat things that we experienced in Malawi was that at the Damasi School, uh, which Dr. Hopkins was a part of, rather than clapping, they would throw stars. And so uh, they didn't clap in church, but they threw stars. So that's another way of giving thanks to God. So welcome. It's great to have you here. How about if I begin with prayer, and then we will uh, share in some music. Great and loving God, as we pause during this beautiful spring day, we give thanks to you for new friends from Malawi who have come to be with us. We pray that as we gather here today that you would be present and speak through Dan as he shares the message of your love. We pray that during this time you would empty us of everything that would distract us from being able to focus on your presence. Allow us to seek all that would redeem us. Let these moments together not become so routine as to become predictable, nor so familiar as to be conventional. Prepare us now for the unexpected that comes with worship, and be with us as together we experience the love that comes from your Son. It's in his name that we pray, and together we say, Amen.
in seated and continue in prayer as we sing together. special day as we gather to hear the words of someone who lights up the lives of so many on Westminster's campus. From his fantastic personality to his brilliant smile, Dan Matt is the person who brightens every single room he walks into. But what I personally love best about today is I get to introduce one of the truest friends I have ever known. Proverbs 18.24 reads, A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than any brother, or in my case, sister. It's hard to imagine my life without Danny, as he has been someone who has stuck by me through it all since freshman year. From campaigning together for a coveted spot on SGA, to having leadership roles in SGA. From hoping we can get involved in Greek life, to being fully immersed, to fully immersing ourselves in it. The laughs, the tears, the prayers, the fears, the memories, and the counting on him from everything to, 
Well, counting on him for everything. Some things will never ever change. He puts God, his family, and his friends before everything else, and that is something I really love about him. And now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce the fun-loving, hard-working, caring, and God-fearing Daniel Hunter Matt to give his message that is sure to leave you smiling and thankful for having this special guy in your life. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> wow, thank you, Courtney. Good morning. Before I get started, I want to acknowledge a few people in the audience, some of which have come very far from Maui to Florida. Uh, my ever so supportive and loving parents, my grandparents, my amazing Aunt Alice, my wonderful State Farm family, my incredible group of guys that I am privileged enough to call my brothers, and lastly, the crazy people of whom I have either spent countless hours with in and out of the SGA office, my slate, in the library studying, and those who I enjoy countless laughs with, my friends. Oh, and uh, even though she's unable to be here this morning, I want to thank my beautiful baby sister for endless support She's not here today because it's her 21st birthday, and uh, after having a conversation with her last night, I can bet she's still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could stand up here and say I'm thrilled to be speaking to you all this morning. However, that would be a blatant lie. Standing up here today means that my time at Westminster is drawing to an abrupt end. Actually, seniors, we only have 22 days till we take that march across Senior Terrace. This signifies an end to an amazing portion of my journey, and to sum it all in one short speech is going to be quite a task. The story I'm about to tell you is one I've never talked about aloud, nor ever pieced together. Actually, the story I'm about to tell you is a work in progress, and at times is pretty messy and unclear. Where to start? Well. I guess a good enough place as any would be 1,347 days ago. A date that unknowingly was the start of an, of an amazing journey, move-in day. I can remember every detail of that day. It was drizzling, which I was thankful for because it masked my mom's tears. I was filled with such mixed emotions of sadness, nervousness, anxiety, excitement, and exhaustion. Little did I know that one place would have such an integral part in my growth as an adult and as a Christian. The experience I would have and the people I would meet these next 1,347 days will assist in piecing the puzzle that is my life. It didn't take me long to get involved and explore new opportunities once I arrived on campus. To be honest, I'm having trouble remembering a time until recently I didn't have meetings, pre-meeting meetings to discuss the meetings, Various events, lectures, and philanthropy events flooding my schedule. You may have caught me complaining every now and then, but don't let my words fool you. I loved being involved. Being a busybody was my identity. I, it was what kept me going through the day. The deadlines, the all-nighters, the bebopping from place to place, and even the stress. I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by peers who contained endless amounts of positivity, love, energy, and support that allowed these long days to go by so easily. We worked as a team, allowing us to overcome almost any obstacle that came our way. I am truly grateful for the relationships that I have formed and the experiences I have gained through my time here. Unfortunately, I got caught up in the hustle and bustle of academics, extracurriculars, and college life in general. The day-to-day -day became almost a blur. I was simply going through the motions. I wasn't failing at any given task. However, I got distracted by my daily routine and placed my faith at the wayside. I lived by a daily checklist, making sure I had time to accomplish all my to-dos in between my well-thought-out schedule. I was caught up in the rat race of going through the motions up until the night of October 13th. On October 13th, I had an accident. I fell down a flight of stairs, breaking my C2 vertebrae while suffering from a concussion, which caused me to black out. The following days I spent in the hospital, I didn't fully realize the severity of my injury and was desperately trying to get back to Westminster. 
I mean, a couple days had passed. I needed to get back to the SIGEP house to keep those guys in line. I needed to get back to work on my capstone, and I needed to get back to SGA to balance the checkbook and sign all those checks. I was glued to my cell phone, making sure all the to-dos were done without missing a beat. I was so self-reliant and independent for so long, and to be strapped down to a bed for a day and a half, not allowed to move, relying on others to assist in such trivial tasks like changing the television channel to eating and even assisting me in getting to the bathroom. Not sure if it was my ignorance towards the severity of my injury or the strength and faith of my parents, who never let their fear of my injury and what could have been show on their faces, but rather they surround me with love, support, and comfort. It wasn't until the days that followed leaving the hospital where I struggled the most, when the realization of my ingra gravity of my injury hit me. The time I spent at home and the months after in the neck brace recovering from the injury, I had to totally reorganize my life. For a while, I had to place aside the demands of others in the busy daily planner and place myself as first priority on my schedule. It was time to recover. I didn't realize it at the time, and to be honest, I still don't fully understand it, but I was taking the puzzle pieces God had laid out for me, and I was trying to force them to fit together. I am extremely fortunate to be blessed with such an amazing mother. When I was recovering at home, we talked about how everything happens as a part of God's plan, and everything that happens happens according to God's will and timing. We never blamed God for my injury, but looked at it as a simple accident and how blessed I am to be alive and walking when so many others who break the same exact bone were not as fortunate. Going from this point, I realized it's time to put my trust and faith in God, giving him my all, which again, if I'm being honest, it's pretty darn hard to give God your all. <clears throat> but I was going to do my best and try and acknowledge when I would become distracted, which comes easily, especially when you graduate in 23 days and 22 days and you have nothing planned for that 23rd day. Like I said, I was ready to make a change. However, I didn't know how yet. It wasn't until I stumbled upon Alex Taylor at the tub, which for my family members who aren't familiar with the tub, it uh, stands for Titan Union Building. It's our student uni union building, not the bathtub. So I wasn't meeting people in the bathtub. <laughs> Alex introduced me to the idea of going on winter break trip with the chapel for Habitat for Humanity. It was the chapel's Habitat for Humanity trip down to Bluffton, South Carolina when the puzzle pieces really started to be placed together. For someone, when, for someone who was so used to the structure and organization of the monotony that can become Westminster, spending a week not knowing the exact task we were going to perform each day caused a lot of anxiety and I found it to be somewhat annoying at first. Nonetheless, through our devotionals and my personal reflection on this trip, I was able to start placing more faith and trust into God's plan. I thank God for the, beautiful, the nine beautiful ladies who inspired and taught me to open up and accept what's out of my control and remember, it's all part of his plan. During this trip, I found a new appreciation for reflection. I spent time reflecting on how I came to this point, reflecting on how I can continue to strengthen my faith after leaving Bluffton. And lastly, I would simply take a step back and watch these amazing ladies selflessly work to better the communities we were working in. They did it with no questions asked, a huge smile on their face, and so much love in their heart. This is one of the most memorable and impactful experiences of my four years here, and I truly thank all those ladies who were a part of that experience. Even though the Habitat experience assisted in building my puzzle pieces, I still feel as though something was missing. This week taught me to reflect and hand over the control to God. Although, again, I wish I could say that from that point on, I freely handed everything over, saying that this morning would be false. Rather, it's a journey I learned, one that is currently ongoing. I'm handing over my life piece by piece. And there are even moments of discomfort and uncertainty where I take a few pieces back. Only through reflection and prayer am I able to reinforce my trust and faith in the puzzle that is being constructed before me. The high from the Habitat trip was starting to wear off, and with so much uncertainty and anxiety in my life, I felt as though the pieces of my puzzle were starting to fall apart. It was 10.45 at night, and I was locked out of my room and roaming campus with a dead cell phone. I really had no destination in mind, just wondering, wondering until I came across a friendly face. Lo and behold, that friendly face came as Emily Perusky. 
After briefly walking aimlessly for a while, she realized I had nowhere to go and nothing to do, and invited me to the Bible study. I accepted her invitation, and that night, at Thursday night Bible study, I felt my pieces realigning again. Through the testimonies and discussions with this wonderful group of people, I have witnessed God's love being put into action. I have worked towards finding my identity in Christ, and I've practiced, af- and I've practiced seeking affirmation from God rather than my peers. This amazing group of individuals have assisted me in feeling more comfortable in discussing my faith and helped me tremendously in strengthening my relationship with God, further encouraging my spiritual growth. Words cannot express how grateful I am for that group of people for assisting me in this journey. As I stated earlier, I am far from perfect, and at times I do try to to take pieces in my own hands and force them together to make a picture I believe is whole, taking a detour from the journey that is my faith. Fortunately, I've learned we must be patient and let God fix each piece, one by one, day by day, and slowly our puzzle will grow. God will put the pieces in place. What I've learned recently is this. You're going to mess up. What's important is how you handle yourself and the situation at hand when you do mess up. Do you try to fit the pieces together that do not fit, or do you pray and allow for faith in God to piece the puzzle together? I want to share a piece of scripture with you that serves as a reminder that we are all growing in Christ as he fits our pieces together, assisting us in our growth as Christians. Ephesians 4, 14 to 16. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they seem like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. After my testimony today, I hope you take away from my growth and faith that nothing happens by chance and there is no such thing as coincidence in God. Everything happens according to God's will and God's perfect timing. Although it may be easy to blame God for when bad things happen in our lives, by changing my perspective and asking for guidance in these troubled times, a moment of complete helplessness transformed into an incredible growth is remember, God knows the future. We are all at different points in our journey in this jigsaw puzzle we call life. We just need to have faith and believe that the Holy Spirit will assist us in fitting the correct pieces together and be confident in knowing that he sees the larger picture even when all we see is a pile of pieces. Thank you.